anytime we drive from Pittsburgh to Ohio, we have to pass through a little sliver of West Virginia to get there. Normally when we do, we make a point to stop at Tudor's Biscuit World in Weirton, but we just discovered a new detour slightly north of there that we can't wait to check out. Okay, first things first, Biscuit World. So, Tudor's Biscuit World is basically a fast food restaurant, but everything is served on biscuits. Ooh. Mm. <laughs> and now, on to the detour. Instead of continuing on into Ohio, if you head up along the Ohio River on Route 2 for 10 minutes to New Cumberland, and navigate to 1110 Ridge Avenue, you'll discover Ken Sinsel's spectacular scrap sculptures. Hi. This is Ken Sinsel. He's the creative force behind this eye-catching roadside attraction overlooking the Ohio River below. When we arrived at his house, he was working on some new features for his yard of sensational sculptures. These here are going to be fishes, and I'm going to make three of them, and uh, I'm going to put them on a pole so they can spin in the wind. One fish is made out of a Freon tank from a refrigerator, and another... So it has a muffler and has a spark plug up here. <laughs> what we noticed immediately was, up close, even these small creations had such character to them. Made from nothing but assorted pieces of scrap, when it's all put together in a certain way, it gains personality. This guy, little guy here, he's going to be a fireman. I'm painting red and stuff. And all of these lively characters spring right out of Ken's mind. He's able to piece it all together in his head first just by looking at a pile of scrap. So I've got a bunch of scrap in the backyard, so when I want to make something, I just go back and look at it and see what I can find. And... The fish and firemen here, though, while very cool, are not the true stars of the show because out in the front yard, there are these huge sculptures. There's a T Rex. Mothman, a horse, a buffalo, and the most iconic and breathtaking of all, this enormous dragon. And here's the thing, don't just do a quick drive by of this attraction, because the true beauty of these sculptures is really up close and in the details. Nuts, bolts, tools, wheels, traps, chains, pipes, gears, panels, hinges, you name it. Hundreds or thousands of individual pieces have been welded together to create these front yard behemoths. Ken says the dragon took him about six months to complete, and not only is it a beautiful piece of art, it's also a functioning barbecue. You can open up the back and barbecue, smoke comes out of his nose. Oh my gosh! Yeah, in the summertime, I sit there and barbecue, and <laughs> it, smoke comes out. If the wind blows good, it goes right across route two. Form and function trash to treasure. The Great Serpent of New Cumberland is an embodiment of all those things. It was also home to some friendly birds building nests when we visited. It has three main pieces. Its body slithers in and out of the ground, every inch is covered in hundreds of pieces of scrap, and its head towers 15 feet above the road below. Not to be outdone, the buffalo across the lawn is also intricately detailed. Festooned with chains, horns made out of pipes, and accessorized with the occasional animal trap and pulley, this one's worth getting out of the car for. And right next to it is the oldest sculpture on the property, the horse. That's the first big piece I ever made. My wife said I ain't allowed to get rid of it. It's part of the family. This gorgeous sculpture has hair made from shining strips of metal and legs of flowing wrenches. And here's something that may interest some of you out there who are into geocaching. When combined, the horse and the dragon are the keys to unlocking the combination lock on a geocache right there on the property. If you're a geocacher, this one is called The Forge. The full riddle is detailed on geocaching.com, and it all involves finding pieces on those two sculptures. Here's the box. Can you open it? If Ken's around, word on the geocaching street is, he'll give you some hints if you're stuck. Anyway, one thing that might come as a surprise is how easy all of this seems to be for Ken. And we're not just assuming that. I asked him what the most challenging part was. What's the most challenging thing about making sculptures out of these different pieces of scrap metal? Um, really not too much. I mean, it just, it's, it's, it's pretty easy to do. 
off. Well, I don't, I don't know if I could do it, but, but I'm impressed. We have a feeling that if it were really that easy, there would be way more front yards across America with giant dragon barbecues. It's our suspicion that Ken is just really insanely talented. He started as a woodworker, but his mentor talked him into buying a welder and taught him the craft. I used to make stuff out of wood a long time ago and stuff would rot and fall apart and stuff like that. <laughs> so, this is more durable. Yeah. I picked up a cheap water and just started welding stuff. Then it got to the bigger stuff and bigger stuff. Ken told us, you can't mess up, it just gets bigger. None of his sculptures are precise or exact. You can see the guidelines he'd been working on with his fish, just drawn freehand with a marker. His style is almost akin to jazz, where things just keep evolving, one part playing off of the one next to it, until his visions grow into their final forms. I don't use tape measures, you know, measuring out the stuff. Oh, you just wing it? I just wing it and put it on there. Ken's daughter, Joy, has also become a skilled welder, alongside her dad, and some of her creations can be spotted around the house. There's some flowers along the side of the house there. There's a little scorpion underneath the tree that she made. As we hung out with Ken, exploring the sculptures, he kept going back inside his house to fetch personal pieces that don't go up on display in the yard. First, he showed us these cutouts of Frankenstein and his bride, cut from tin metal, a nod to Ken's love of classic monster movies. Then he dipped back into the house and came out a few minutes later with this heart that he made for his wife for Valentine's Day. Yeah, it's a motorcycle chain, uh, spark plugs, uh, tab, got some bolts and nuts. It became apparent that Ken finds enormous amounts of joy in his craft and sharing it with others. His sculptures have overflowed out across the street. That's where you'll find a giant scorpion with a body made from an old oil drum, the head is a tractor trailer rim, and claws are manually cut from sheets of metal. The stinger is apart from an old conveyor belt from the 1950s. And beyond that, Ken has donated a bunch of sculptures to Weirton as well. As you know, Ken likes to wing it, so he didn't have precise addresses to give us, just sort of turn left here and it's back behind the thing style navigation tips. We had two pretty easy landmarks to look for, so we set off on a hunt for the sensual sculptures of Weirton. And it wasn't long before we came across the first one. Oh yeah, there they are. The first one is a band at the Weirton Event Center. It's on a hill back behind the venue at the corner of East Street and Cove Road by the DMV. The bagpiper's body is an old circuit breaker box. All their faces are brake vacuum boosters for tractor trailers, and their arms are motorcycle chains. This dude's hair is made from the brush of a street sweeper. We'd also like to note that the presence of a guitar, trombone, and bagpipes indicates that this is a Celtic ska band which is pretty rare. Okay, he said there were some more up by Weir High. You climb a long, winding hill up to the next set. They're up at Weir High School, home of the Red Riders. Oh, there they are right there. These were commissioned to honor the class of 55. After more than 60 years of reunions, that class finally decided to stop holding formal gatherings and instead donate something to their alma mater. They chose some sculptures made by Ken. And as we were heading out through Weirton, we stumbled upon a third set that we weren't even expecting to find. These are outside Overbrook Towers, also on Cove Road, a little further to the east from the event center. Standing facing the highway is a circuit breaker handyman with some tools that are actually part of his character and not his body, and a street sweeper haired woman walking her puppy. Do you get a lot of visitors here? Yeah, I get a lot of people coming. They come from all over the place, Belgium and <laughs> Germany and wow. Pittsburgh. And Remember, you can't mess up, it only gets bigger. And Ken welcomes all travelers to his front yard gallery. You can swing by any time to check out all of his artwork during daylight hours. No appointment necessary. Some of the pieces that Ken uses are actually donated, so if you have some extra pieces of metal or tools that you'd like to donate, they might even make it into his next piece of art. There's a lot of times I come home from work and there'd be a lot of stuff sitting outside of my driveway in my yard, and so <laughs> which is pretty nice. Normally you wouldn't want people to put scrap metal in your yard, but in this case... Yeah, sometimes they do. <laughs> <laughs> oh, and we almost forgot to mention Law Dog. He's just on the sidewalk away from the houses you're leaving. Part dog, part judge, all justice. Woof. And again, all of this is right in the front yard of 1110 Ridge Avenue. All you gotta do is park on a side street, walk on over and take a look. So that's all for now, and we'll see you on our next quick detour.